Now, we often talk about their ABC as the tax-funded, funded, uh, taxpayer-funded behemoth, I should say, that chews through a billion dollars every single year with all the wrong priorities. But there is another government organisation that gets big cash, and I reckon it seems to have its priorities wrong too. I'm talking about the CSIRO. It's a heralded outfit with a great track record. It's got many scientific breakthroughs to its credit. But now it seems to be pushed in the wrong direction. According to Minister Ed Husick, we need to reset our national science vision to include First Nations knowledge. And we have to understand a failure to properly acknowledge climate change and a failure to engage with emerging critical technologies, whatever that means. Well, here to take us through this move is South Australian, former South Australian MP, I should say, Nicole Flint. Nicole, good to have you back on Thank Bernardi. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, don't, don't send me back to Parliament. No, thank you. No, you're much more valuable out here <laughs> to us. A billion dollars a year goes to the CSIRO. What's this First Nations uh, idea? What's this whole process? What are they doing fighting against climate change? Is that to the benefit of all Australians? So Minister Ed Husick, who's in charge of CSIRO Industry and Sciences, has just announced what we would have formally called a review, but he's calling a conversation uh, into resetting our science agenda uh, nationally because, you know, looking into things like uh, how to improve technology, cyber security, uh, food, soil management, water, you know, that's very 2015 apparently because that's the last time we, we uh, wrote our national science priorities. So he's looking at, as you covered in your introduction, things like First Nation, Nations knowledge and climate change uh, as the key priorities for science. And I think, I hope, Corey, that viewers at home, um, especially the scientifically minded ones or the farming minded ones, might put in a submission to his uh, conversation or his review, as I would call it, so that they can uh, make sure that our science, national science agenda is not derailed by the Labor Party. It seems like they're pushing towards feel good science. And one of these spaces, and I'm going to be critical of the previous government as well, because they were funding the CSIRO. Then there was an anti-meat focus, and apparently that was all about climate change as well. Have you seen that change at the moment? Because the meat industry is worth a heck of a lot of money to this country. That's right. So all of our um, uh, meat-based industries, so pork, chicken, uh, beef and lamb, about $34 billion in gross revenue every single year for the Australian economy. Beef alone, $15 billion. Um, unfortunately, I was part of the Turnbull government uh, that uh, started um, questioning uh, how healthy meat, beef in particular, was for the environment. We saw um, former Minister Karen Andrews um, uh, really promote the seaweed agenda at CSIRO, which I found uh, quite confronting, I suppose, Corey, because we have 25 million cattle in Australia uh, that CSIRO have decided if we could feed them seaweed, we would reduce their emissions because they're such an environmental threat, apparently, which I don't agree with. Uh, the problem is, of course, Corey, how do you feed 25 million cattle seaweed every day? What should we do, release them onto the beaches and let them roam free? It's a huge challenge, isn't it? But they don't think these things through. But i got to point out, we've been pushed towards this whole fake meat agenda, saying it's just as good. But these fake meat companies are struggling all around the world. People obviously want the real thing. Shouldn't our science organisations be looking to work with our competitive advantage, which is about developing the best possible cattle, chicken, uh, pork, pork um, lamb. lamb, whatever, so that we can maximise the revenue, the food, export around the world. Yeah, precisely, Corey. Exactly. And uh, this is... Um, CSIRO have partnered with a, a company, uh, V2 Foods, whose entire aim is to really end meat production because, again, they claim that beef in particular is an environmental vandal, really, um, and they want to replace it. And if you read through their website, it's all anti-beef propaganda. And what really... Um, upsets me and annoys me about this, makes me angry about this whole debate, is that the, um, the United Nations initial statistics on beef were, um, and, their and beef's contribution to climate change were calculated in a completely different way to aviation, transport and energy. They looked at the entire life cycle for beef in terms of its global emissions, 
but they don't do that for an aeroplane, for example. So um, mm. you, it's not a fair comparison. Agriculture no. for too long. It's has... not fair because they don't want to eat beef, but they want to take planes to Davos and all of Correct. that. Correct. Hey, Nicole Flynn, I'm sorry, we're out of time, but it's always good to have you on the Bernardi program, and I hope we'll see you again next week. Thank you, Corey.